Do you know when I was a school teacher, they told me that I had to teach a thing called evolution? I said, I can teach that, no problem at all. I'll show you how to teach evolution, it's very easy. Uh, what a strange doctrine. What strange minds these people must have. Maybe some of you are here tonight. Very strange indeed. Have a look at it. You divide your board in half like this. On one side you write the word God. And on the other side you write the word nothing. And then you say to the children, have a look around at the world of design. And where do you think it came from? Do you think God designed it? Or do you think it was designed by nothing? <laughs> forget about the amoeba. Forget about the primeval germ. Let's go straight back to nothing, shall we? Let's be honest. And if we go back to nothing, we can only assume that nothing was designed. And therefore nothing is here. Because if nothing designs nothing, there's nothing to design. And there's nothing to be made, you'll agree? The argument now is finished, it's all over. We don't need a court case. Creationism versus evolution, we don't need a court case, it's all finished now. That is the choice. And then I watch television programs and I hear about these wonderful things that God has made and they dive in the sea and they find stuff they've never seen before. And so I tell the children that a scientist, a definition of a scientist, is a person who is discovering some of the things that God has made. That's what a scientist is. He hasn't shown us everything yet. The deeper in the sea you go, you find more stuff you didn't even know was there. God doesn't even care if you find it or not. He's a, he's a designer. A, a, a peacock came into our building. We were down the country preaching at a place called Cal Ken. Anybody know Cal Ken? Do you know where that is, dear? It's in from Albury, Wodonga. We had wonderful meetings there in a farming area and we were staying on a farm and a peacock came into the house one night and he went, squawk. And I looked at the peacock and said to May, look at the beautiful colours. An old farmer told us this. He said an artist could paint those colours on that peacock but only God could build the feathers so they come out ex exactly the right length. So all the patterns are perfect on both sides. So at the judgment, all it takes is one peacock and everybody's gone. <laughs> It's all finished with a peacock, that's all. It doesn't need to prove anything else. And I was excited. And then I hear these men on television saying, 50 million years ago, <laughs> whales crawled out of the sea and they dropped their fins and they grew legs. <laughs> I thought, that's interesting. In my mind, I can see a great big heavy whale dropped his fins, he's grown legs. What happens next? Answer, he sinks in the mud. <laughs> These people obviously are not thinking very clearly, are they? Not thinking clearly. Because he hasn't yet grown his feet, you see. You've got to have some feet, flat ones, to stop him sinking. But it takes a few million years to grow his feet, and so he sinks in the mud. However, they finally get up on the land, and then they get up a tree somehow. Then they come down from the trees, and the result is us. I find that very hard to swallow, I'll be quite frank with you. I mean, it's interesting, but very hard to swallow. And then I see all in the newspapers, whales are beaching themselves all around the coasts of Australia. And wicked men are putting them back in the sea again. Don't they realise these whales are trying to become human beings? <laughs> now some of you, listen, some of you are not laughing, you know, because you're very angry tonight. Some of you feel like shouting at me, but I had a doctor on our Middle East tour one day. He said, Barry, the biggest proof against evolution is the law of entropy. He said, that means the second law of thermodynamics says that nothing ever improves of itself. Everything always deteriorates. You have a box of apples, one bad apple, they all go off. And you'll find human beings will not come out as we are today. Charles Darwin said the human eyeball was beyond his understanding. Beautiful, friends. Better than the best camera you will ever buy. And this stuff is being taught to kids at school. It's the most stupid, ridiculous thing you've ever thought of. The beautiful creation. Once you get to know God, you'll understand his creation. And you'll look at it and you'll marvel at the way he made it. You'll stand and even look at a flower. Can you imagine a guy like me looking at a flower? Normally can't stand them. But when I discovered this, I thought, God, you're wonderful. Everything is beautiful. All the patterns and designs. Is that correct? Yeah.